Did you know that glider pilots can race fast and far the speed of just glider on pilot. the sun's energy without using an engine? Now, are you ready Would to have a look at how they do that today? Let's meet a glider pilot. Now, are you ready to race? To do that, we need to know a little bit about meteorology, the science of weather. And there are three important things. First, water changes state from solid to liquid to gas. Second thing is that uh, hot air rises, glider pilots call it thermals. And the third thing is that it's all driven by the sun, it's all solar power. So let's think about water. Now I think you know water freezes at zero degrees Celsius to become a solid, we call it ice, and then it's liquid from zero up to 100 C where it boils or evaporates to become a gas, water vapour. Water vapour is invisible, uh, but as it cools it condenses back into water. So when you look at a boiling kettle, you're actually seeing the water vapour condense back into liquid droplets, and that's exactly how clouds form. So second important thing, hot air rises. Now all air contains water vapour, different amounts on different days. And when you heat air, it expands. All gases expand when you heat them, they become less dense. And then rises through cooler, denser air. As it rises, it cools and cooler air can't hold as much water vapour. So as it cools, some water will condense out and that's how clouds are formed. Now we all know that hot air rises in a balloon where you fill the air balloon with uh, hot air and up it goes, but the same happens when the sun shines on the ground and just bubbles of air go up. Let's think about how that happens. As the earth rotates, imagine it's dark, then it gradually becomes light, the sun shines on the earth and it starts to heat the ground. Now, some surfaces heat more quickly than others, and I bet you know that if you've been playing barefoot on the grass on a hot day and you walk off the grass onto the patio and it's really hot underfoot, you jump back onto the grass. So some surfaces heat more quickly, and when they do, they heat the ne air next to them a little bit more than the air around it. So the ground heats the air up. Now we know what happens when it heats. It makes it expand, it becomes less dense, so it rises. Eventually the bubble leaves the ground, up it goes, but of course as it rises, it cools. And eventually it gets to the point where it can't hold all its water vapour and a cloud forms. And this is called convection. Convection is where a gas or a liquid is heated, which makes a bubble rise up through the slightly more dense liquid next to it. You've probably seen something like this before. This is an example of the water cycle where damp ground, water evaporates into the air, it rises up, cools and a cloud condenses. And if the cloud gets big enough, then rain falls out of the cloud back onto the ground. That's the water cycle. Convection of this sort makes cumulus clouds. These puffy summer clouds are called cumulus clouds and glider pilots use them for racing. And you can see here how a glider has uh, come in from the right into the uh, column of rising air and then it's flying in a little circle, turning tightly in a circle, climbing with the rising air until it gets to the top and then going on its so way. So to race we need hot air And here's a glider Let's flying into and thermaling with another glider in some rising air. So to race we need hot air to rise. Let's see how that happens. We're going to do some practical experiments. Uh, we're going to actually use water rather than air because that's easier to keep in one place and watch as it does. So uh, what you need for the experiment is a clear two litre plastic drinks bottle with the top cut off and the smallest jar or bottle you can find. We hope you've collected those and got them with you today. You also need some string, a piece of white paper and some sticky tape so that we can see what's happening more easily, some food colouring and hot and cold water. A small jar is going to contain hot water and be our thermal, the pool of hot air that's originally on the ground. And the large drinks bottle will be the surrounding air. We're going to do three experiments. One, we're going to put hot water with food colouring into the small jar and lower it carefully in through cold water to the bottom of the drinks bottle. The second one, we're going to have it with the water in the jar only very slightly warmer than the cold water in the bottle. And the third time we're going to do it with cold water in the jar and warm water in the bottle. Why do you think we're doing these three experiments? 
you'll need to make a table to write your results in, make a table like this. Now over to you to go and do your three experiments um, and we'll come back when you've done and see what happened. Now you've modelled cumulus forming, let's have a look at some in real life. Now you've modelled cumulus forming, let's have a look at some in real life. And here, here are some cumulus clouds. Oh look, here's a glider in this one, can you see it? And if you look at this one, which is quite a big cumulus here, you can see sort of all the swirl and bubble in it. And we saw that's what we saw with our experiment, didn't we? We saw it bubbling gently up and sort of swirling around a bit. Well, that's what happens in real life too. OK, let's have a look at a time lapse video of that cumulus cloud forming. Now we're going to look at it quite slowly here. If you look to the right hand side of the uh, middle of the picture, we're at a gliding club. See the arrow? Watch as a cumulus cloud starts to form just in front of it. You can see as the air rises, you get more and more cloud form. And then gradually, as the cloud's done its job and the air stops going in, it all evaporates and the cloud vanishes. And now look at the one in front and you can see separate bits of bubble forming separate bits of cloud all within the same cloud mass. You can see them form and you can see them evaporate. And that's what we climb in in a glider and can use to fly hundreds of miles at 100 mile an hour with no engine. Hi, we hope you enjoyed the challenge and found it fun and interesting. We're from Junior Gliding. I'm Lucy and I'm 17 and I've been gliding for three years. And I'm Em, I'm 16 and I've been gliding for two. Did you know that you can fly on your own in a glider before you can drive a car? If you want to find out more about gliding, go to the British Gliding Association website www.gliding.co.uk. There are around 80 gliding clubs across the UK. We hope to see you in the skies soon.